Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, brew and review. <laughs> you. <laughs> so we're actually going to review your systems on the Who Chose subreddit, uh, which can be found in the description of every video that I make. So if you have any problems, questions, or you just want to show off a hydroponic system that you've created yourself, just head over to the Who Chose subreddit or the newly created Facebook group if you don't have Reddit. So they're both available in the description of this video and every video once I get to updating them all. <laughs> so grab yourself a brew and let's get to review you. So we're gonna start about 11 months ago when I first started the Reddit page. So I've got a ton of NFT systems and you can just see how productive these systems are. Like, have a go at that. This is actually uh, the system that won the Golden Puck in the last Who Chose Hydro show that I did. And uh, up here, we've actually got a video of it. Okay, it's just been about another 20 days since my last post. Look at that system. Open up the lids. And I believe Floorcraft is actually based in Melbourne and this was in the Melbourne winter. So, you're looking at a greenhouse box here, and it's a fantastic way to extend your growing season if you live in a colder climate. Zucchinis are going well. Looks like we've got one that we could probably pick. It's all going pretty off. Off its guts. Off its guts. <laughs> all right. What else have we got? Oh, so this is Jordan's system. Actually, Jordan sent me a video. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, so Jordan's laser cutting uh, the pucks and it's, I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> a nice top down view there of the NFT. Uh, it actually looks like not an NFT, but it's still productive. <laughs> this looks like, like a new hobby in the making. I love that there's just a textbook and all the materials to jump head first into uh, an addiction. <laughs> So this is an interesting one. It's a hanging basket and in the hanging basket there is the ancient hydroponic. It's just an Oya with a hydroponic nutrient in it. So, I mean, whatever plant that is, I can't tell. Uh, but it's, it's thriving. <laughs> it works. I love this post. It is okay not to know what you're doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and I don't expect to know what I'm doing forever. <laughs> but we can all struggle through it together. So this is a system from a user over in Japan, Tokyo to be specific, and they've obviously got a cheaper gray pipe, which would just be an industry standard over there. And um, he is going nuts on his veranda. Look at that. And have a go at that zucchini. <laughs> uh. So this is Steve again, and he's Pretty much got the whole seed to system set up from when I was using um, cocoa to start seeds. Um, I'd actually change this now. Uh, I would change this to a cocoa perlite uh, just to make it lighter and fluffier and more aerated. So this is a really good example of uh, two-way communication that ends up in sort of like a future idea for a system. So OP here was using a barrel siphon uh, to siphon his nutrients into the barrel for when he was away his wife could just come along and uh, turn that tap on and it would siphon from the larger barrel into the smaller reservoir um, now actually on on this post I suggested using uh, ball valves so um, I purchased these ball valves uh, for a the future grows that I was going to do and I hadn't used them yet um, so uh, but you can see his system is just going nuts <clears throat> so this is Steve's system again and look at the growth that he's achieved in that system uh, that's fantastic so this is another NFT by Benny uh, so he's got well that's that's obviously cucurbit I'm not sure which one probably pumpkin let's do this backwards so he's using the stackable sprout starter to plant his seeds uh, and germinate. And then he's transferring those over into the puck propagator. And they're propagating under a metal halide light 
It's got his air stone coming in the side there, you can see, with that green tubing. And the growth there. Look at that. Look at that growth. That's great. Transplanted over into his NFT. Started again. This time with cucurbits. Growth. Decided to move over to a Dutch bucket system. Growth. And has it all running back and, and utilizing the NFT as the drain for the Dutch bucket system, which is ingenious. Like, why not? And look at that growth. Just fantastic. Like, that's great stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Benny Stanners. Stanners? Stanners. Forgive me. <laughs> so here's Steve's again. What are we under this time? That's an LED. <laughs> he's, he's named his, he's named his channels. That's sick. I mean, that's what it's all about really, right? Feeding yourself. And he's got the auto pots running. Well, this was super exciting for me. So I'm sharing it with you now. This was when I got created on the rise. So for a whole day, uh, I was featured on YouTube, uh, in the trending tab and, um, it didn't really do much for the channel. Uh, it's very niche content, and uh, my click through uh, my click through rate went through the floor that day. Uh, but I mean, to have YouTube actually select your channel to go uh, as their creator on the rise is just <laughs> mind blowing. All right, so here is uh, an alternative design for the stealth wardrobe compact flood and drain combination. So he's just got an old TV unit and created himself a compact flood and drain hydroponic system uh, at utilizing the materials that you have available. And that's fantastic. So uh, obviously a blurple LED over a strawberry patch. <laughs> and here we have OP with just an enormous, enormous zucchini. Uh, I mean, the zucchinis just love NFT and you'll actually, you'll lose control of them. They'll just get too big. <laughs> so here we've got an IBC flood and drain and this is going through eight weeks of growth. So, I mean, look at that. <laughs> so much green. Another one, another proud gardener, <laughs> OP. <laughs> so another one from Steve. Uh, on a different system completely. So this is the flood and drain. Oh, sorry. No, this is the compact Dutch bucket hydroponic system. So yeah, good growth there. So another ancient irrigation hydroponic system. Uh, this system is really versatile. And as you can see here, uh, that's cocoa perlite. So you don't need to use uh, vermiculite perlite. Uh, these systems are extremely versatile. Like you can mix and match media for all of these systems. Give you a wee update <clears throat> as well. So all done and dusted. Um, we've got root. So as I was saying, uh, mixing and matching media, Gav has used uh, cocoa perlite in the Dutch bucket system. Now, obviously you need to adjust your watering cycles depending on how the media holds water and nutrient, but as long as you're keeping that nice balance of uh, oxygenation dry and uh, nutrient and water wet, uh, if you balance that with the medium that you're using, you can pretty much use any medium in any system. Obviously like, no media systems like NFT, you don't need any media, but you can tweak all of these systems to work with basically any media. And for some more along my bench, which I'll want to try and get some capsicums grown now. These are all tomatoes and I've got an eggplant grown here, but yeah, it's going all right. <clears throat> tomatoes have all settled in from when I transplanted them out of the um, 
out of my pup system, the mini pup which I used, which was good. So this one doesn't seem to be doing too well and I don't know why. It's getting water, it's moist, there's water in there and I just, I don't know, not sure why it's not working. So I think the actual problem here, I'm not sure on the irrigation cycles, but I know that later on, uh, once we get up the top, that the oxygenation was a problem. Gav added a air pump to the system and it helped. So that tells me that I think that there was a lack of oxygen somewhere in that system. And I'd say it's from the media being overwatered. Uh, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Guys, just want to quickly show you this, see if I can get some recommendations. So, as you can see, my water level is quite high in the NFT, and it's purely down to these roots of the Olo Radicchio um, blocking, blocking the water come down. So, as we get lower, so it's quite full there as well. My solution to this issue, and I get this issue in my NFT system, is to have a uh, greater slope. There's really no way around it. The roots are gonna block. So this system by Environmental Owl is uh, the, the cheap and easy flood and drain kiddie pool hydroponic system. And I mean, this just shows that no idea is original anymore. Um, so he's obviously had this running for a long time. And have a look at that. That is some nice growth of strawberries. And this just shows that it works. I mean, what have we got? Oh, we've got a heap of other stuff too. So that, that must be, no, it's not an aquaponic system. I love this photo. Uh, it looks, <laughs> it looks like a photo that you'd find in an old photo album and you just go, what the hell? <laughs> what, what is going on with that ice cube tray? <laughs> uh, it looks like it was taken by an actual photographer though. So since nice. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, I bought a 3D printer. <laughs> Don't tell my missus again, but uh, we're gonna have some fun very soon. Uh, oh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, you know those things that come in the mail or are coming in the mail and you're just sitting there watching the road, waiting for it to come, checking the mailbox every day? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it, well it won't fit in my mailbox. <laughs> so this is the Hydro Spiral. And uh, I won't be able to make this one. My, the base of the 3D printer I've ordered is too small, um, but we'll come up with solutions for that. I didn't want to get a really, really expensive 3D printer. Uh, I got a cheap-ish 3D printer. I'll show you the 3D printer I got actually. And the reason I bought this 3D printer is because it's cheap-ish, but has a large uh, working area. Um, and it has fairly inexpensive filament. So I wanted to get something that was kind of accessible. Look, I know 3D printers aren't the cheapest thing in the world, but I wanted to get something that most people would be able to save for. Um, and then we can utilize that so that uh, we can save money in the future by printing most of our own things. So my aim with this is to give the community tools so that they can create their own plastic parts uh, rather than uh, having to purchase things like auto valves and uh, bulkhead fittings and stuff like that. Now, I'm not sure that this will be cost effective, but there's only really one way to find out. <laughs> All right, look at that. So this is the cheap alternative to auto pots method. So I will give you some, a quick personal tip with this. If you are gonna do this method, I would use the pot in pot in pot method, um, or just the pot in pot, and then place it within this system. When I actually pull those chili plants out of uh, the cheap alternative to auto pot dog bowl water thing, uh, the bottom, the bottom part of the pot, there were no roots in. Uh, and that's not good. Uh, it just means that the roots didn't want to go down there because it was anoxic. So my advice would be to minimize that space that the water is waterlogging that growing media. And 
uh, with the pot in pot method, uh, you're just getting a halo at the bottom of the pot. So I would change that system if I could go back and you know change the video, but I can't. So here's that system again, and you've got some really nice leaf growth on that bean. The addiction has evolved and it starts taking up your whole yard. I mean, even in the background there, look at that. That's, that's that compact Dutch bucket system and it's going nuts. Uh, and uh, he's, he's almost caught up to me with auto pots too. <laughs> uh, what a hobby. <laughs> and there's the bean. Now, it looks stretchy, maybe. Beans are so hard to, I'm, I'm currently growing beans and they are vigorous. Like it, it's hard to keep up with beans, it really is. And I, I think that, that that dog bowl waterer, it's pretty optimistic. <laughs> but it works. This is Gav's, uh, a follow-up to so Gav's do Dutch a bucket a system. on our Dutch bucket system. It's going well. Um, tomatoes, now that I've got my nutrients right, more tomatoes. And I've got my eggplants growing here. Oh, yeah, the long These purples are, baby eggplants, are so good. actually getting quite some size. And this was, this plant was really quite stagnant for a good three, four months at least. And then all of a sudden, ever since I put the air pump into the system, it, the growth has just absolutely exploded. And then that's also why I've got all this fantastic... So what that tells me is there's not enough oxygen in the root zone. With the use of cocoa and perlite in this system, uh, I would definitely dial back those irrigation cycles. You want to wet the medium enough so that it's moist um, and so that it dries out just to the point of, uh, I guess, the plant really needing water, uh, and then you irrigate again uh, in, a, in, in, in pulses. So the plant sucks it almost dry, and then you irrigate again, and then it sucks it almost dry, and then you irrigate again. And this is fluctuating between those two um, oxygenated and nutrient and waterlogged states. Uh, and you really, when you put your finger into that medium, it should not be waterlogged. It should be uh, moist to the touch. And that's it. So uh, at the top, you've got your educational resources thread and your cheapest hydroponic nutrient thread. Uh, I'll be bringing out a video in the very near future on the cheapest hydroponic nutrient. And let me know if you wanna see any other videos, you can let me know in the comments below this video. If you have any queries that you need answered or would like to be featured on this video, uh, you can head over to the Facebook group or this Reddit page and I'd love to see your systems and I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. So if you'd like to be featured on a future video or you just wanna show off a system that you've created, head on over, flick them up and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking. Cheers.